a very good afternoon and we'll just begin the uh, next session and I'm sure all of the others would join us very soon post lunch. Uh, again, I had one interesting teaser here. Oh, it has already shown the answer, is it? So what are the four Upavedas? And we all know the names of these four Upavedas. But, you know, one very important point which I want to make. So the modern um, research and scholarship keeps on, you know, flaunting about interdisciplinary research and cross-disciplinary research and all. But whereas it has uh, been a natural phenomenon for, you know, the, the, the Vedic, um, you know, research that we have in place. So it's like integrated approach, you know, that we see very naturally happening, be it language, be it the poem, poetic, you know, expression, the way Dr. Aditya was also mentioning in his presentation. So uh, this becomes the prelude for, sorry, uh, the next presentation, Dr. Kalyan Kumar Chakravarti ji. He is an Indian historian, art historian, writer, action anthropologist, academician, and administrator, known, as, uh, known for his intercultural and cross-disciplinary research and activism. He is a retired IS of 1970 batch. He is chairman of Lalit Kala Academy. <laughs> India's Federal Fine Arts and uh, Fine Arts Academy. He served as Director General of the National Museum and he was Vice Chancellor of National Museum Institute at New Delhi from 2004 to 2006. He's a graduate. Uh, he obtained his graduate degree MPA in Public Administration from uh, John F. Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University and AM and PhD in Fine Arts from the Harvard Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. So, um, you know, topic for his presentation today is Living Community Museum of Vedic Cosmology, Unifying Arts and Sciences for Embedding and Universalizing Consciousness. So, it, it is very amaz amazing to see your journey, sir, and we would be all looking forward to your presentation. Distinguished guests and scholars, that's rather a high-sounding, uh, long-winded title, uh, but uh, it is quite off the track. I mean, away from Puranic and Siddhantic cosmology and a mathematical experiential fr framework, but the experiential framework ultimately comes out of the Vedic consciousness. And um, when some of my friends at the BRC and uh, ISKCON requested me uh, to uh, suggest how the museum should be planned, uh, the, my first reaction was, I haven't you already built something? Because I saw that a, do a dome-like structure had been built. And uh, uh, what happens is uh, one has to plan the contents before planning the container. And uh, if the container has already been built, then one uh, has to uh, dovetail uh, the content with the architecture. Now, uh, this uh, topic of uh, consciousness, one should remember that uh, this has been discussed extensively by the early orientalists, some of whom were discussed here. And uh, people like uh, Hegel, uh, they saw the Indian uh, spirit as in a state of dream, like a woman after childbirth, vapid, insipid, not really jestful, uh, and uh, he added that the Indian uh, consciousness suffers from inadequate symbolism. He tries to finitize the divine 
divinize the finite and falls between both the stools. Um, even scholars of Advaita Vedanta, like Paul Hacker, who should also be considered an orientalist, he added that if uh, uh, the logo seed of Indian uh, Vedic and Vedantic philosophy is to bear flower and fruit, it cannot grow in its native soil. It is barren in its native soil. It, will, it has to be transplanted uh, to the soil fertilized by the Judeo-Christian stream of thought. Only then it will flower. Um, um, it is uh, forgotten that, uh, that consciousness study, uh, which has become uh, a fashionable buzzword nowadays, was the fulcrum of all Vedic studies. In fact, uh, uh, when we, we uh, uh, talk about um, the four laws of Newton, we forget a fifth law, which he mentioned, uh, which was about uh, the hypothesis uh, beyond uh, deduction. And uh, Sayanachara has uh, mentioned it. And um, in Indian um, philosophy, and history of arts and sciences, there has always been this uh, intuitive leap of imagination, overlapping thousands of years of history on the sweeping wings of consciousness. And uh, so a Buddha, a Ramakrishna, they embody that consciousness within the fleeting moment of uh, a few decades. Uh, so if one is talking about uh, embodying a Vedic consciousness in all its ramifications, in a closed door space, one undertakes a task which falls flat on its face. However, having looked at this uh, precinct and understood what they are trying to do in terms of uh, fulfilling this consciousness in practical programs, one can say that if a museum is feasible, if its approach is changed, this will not be a museum. I have not. I have uh, set up many museums um, in all over the country, but they have all been museums for demuseumization. Because I believe that museumization of the world has been the biggest bane of our consciousness today. Um, we have been um, domesticating, co-opting, and uh, cannibalizing human habitats into museums. And the communities which live in the museums, which live in the, their habitats, they are considered as vestigial detritus of history who can well be forgotten because they need to be improved in their manners and morals and they also have to be inducted into the civilizational process. And that civilizational process is dominated by a consciousness of appropriation, utilization, objectification, 
and commodification. So that is the consciousness which has resulted all over the world in that technification, homogenization, and degradation of biocultural diversity, destruction of the habitats, loss of the aquifers, um, mutual violence, every man's hand is raised against every other, and uh, violence not only in terms of actual slaughter, on recalls Eli Witzel, who had uh, once said after uh, the Holocaust that the executioner kills only twice. The second time, by silence. And in this, in all over the world, we are, our consciousness has excluded an entire part of humanity, the hinterland communities, uh, which have uh, conserved uh, the synergy of the ecosystems uh, without really understanding the philosophy of it. They have just lived the interdependence of uh, organic and inorganic, human and non-human communities. And uh, now I have uh, worked with these communities all my life and being an administrator. And uh, I have always marveled at the way uh, they are able to keep their consciousness away from the strife and the pettiness in spite of the political interference nowadays all over the country uh, the political system is integrated it uh, goes deep into the uh, habitats and uh, tempers with it in spite of that um, so the museum uh, has to Demuseumize. In my uh, work, when I have, whenever I have handled a museum, it has been an attempt uh, to uh, move from collection of objects to recollection of ideas to counter amnesia and aphasia, loss of memory and speech among thousands of our speech communities. Um, and uh, move from mere documentation, because that is what goes on in the name of museum activity, to actual revitalization and regeneration to set up museums of ideas rather than of objects. Uh, so it's not a small gas board museum, a mortician's gallery of objects, a charnel house of objects, as it were, that we are talking about. If you are talking about a museum uh, that will embody and universalize uh, the Vedic consciousness, then we have to move away immediately, especially because this uh, institution is equipped to achieve it, to form this uh, concept of housing a few objects and a few exhibits in a structure uh, to restoration of the synergistic connections that already exist among uh, human and non-human communities 
and uh, in the process the vedic uh, literature much of the vedas are lost and uh, i have tried to revive the vedic recitative traditions all over the country it has been very difficult very few villages very few institutions are into it so the mnemonic traditions which have sustained uh, this uh, vedic heritage cannot be textualized only it is a contextual tradition and a, to reduction of a context into a text is the museumization of the vedas so uh, this uh, living community of individuals who have combined their corpus of practices at the conjunction of the sacred and the profane be it waste management be it water management be it bhavi post be it uh, the other uh, health and education oriented practices these are concrete initiatives uh, which uh, are animated by that consciousness of uh, demuizamization so what one has to do is to just uh transplant that initiative into various mutations and modifications according to regional and local parameters in different parts of the world it cannot be a same monolithic uh, model which will be multiplied everywhere we shall show a video we shall provide a few formulae and it will be done no it's not possible um so what uh, is uh, the situation today i recall a passage from eats turning and turning in the widening air the falcon cannot hear the falconer things fall apart the center cannot hold the best lack all convictions while the worst are full of passionate intensity um that's why gandhi ji used to speak about the seven sins and he spoke about ending the divorce of wealth and work knowledge and character commerce and morality worship and sacrifice growth and equity so that is sustainable development and that is also um building on our strengths our uh, village republics which still live and are vital have a lot to contribute and the urban peri urban village caste peasant tribal folk continuum has existed from vedic times till this day if one looks into the oral literature or the dialects of the folklore with which i work a lot and someone spoke about knowledge systems there are these knowledge systems harvested and sustained by communities all over the world which are location specific eco specific culture specific community specific they are born from their hills and dells bluffs and spurs and uh, but these knowledge systems are now being incorporated into the individual titular ipr structure 
No, we have been, I have been working on uh, the sui generis community IPR structure. It is always suggested that knowledge grows only in laboratories. It doesn't grow in, uh, see, community habitats. Completely wrong. I have been additional chief secretary forest, and I recall having met children who know, knew more about botany and forestry than I did. Knew the names, knew the nomenclatures, knew the classifications, knew the ingredients. And uh, so when one is building a biocultural diversity register, one cannot follow the German forester Brandis's uh, philosophy, which, uh, which is the fulcrum of uh, Indian forestry. One is to work with the communities to create new working plans, you know, all of Western Ghats, with all these uh, forts of uh, Shivaji, and all these uh, rivers which are flowing down to join the sea. From here to the Kerala, it's a fabulous center of global biodiversity after the Himalayas. It is getting degraded and destroyed by mega developmental intrusions of uh, invasive technological giants. One cannot stop the juggernaut by talking. One can only put up bastions of defense and resistance through a museum, living museum movement which is sustained by communities. And that uh, uh, would be uh, truly serving uh, Vedic consciousness. I'm talking about um, science. Um, didn't Darwin uh, talk about uh, the possible tragedy of humanity when it fails to adopt to the new conditions of life by selecting variations given to it by nature and by balancing mutations and selections. The world has changed. Human being hasn't. It should know that uh, the molecular unity in all organisms unites it with all communities. And uh, when it destroys life, beginning with uh, the blue-green algae, um, or the blue water infrastructure of the oceans, or uh, the multi tier forestry, including the underground and the above ground tiers by plantation economies. Um, one forgets that they're interfering with the unfolding ramifications of uh, consciousness that has uh, kept this world alive. Um, so the global war warming, climate change, these are not only phenomena of releasing CO2 through an industrial civilization using wood, soil, coal, and uh, natural gas. It is also substitution of false consciousness uh, for the correct consciousness. Um, human beings think that they, are, they have arrived, they're technological giants. This technology is so hopelessly inadequate that they cannot cross or negotiate the interstellar spaces, even in 
many light years, and one light year is uh, one trillion miles. <clears throat> they cannot do it, uh, but uh, they feel that they are here forever, and they can afford uh, to interfere with the mind matter observer observed unity that exists in practice and theory all over the world among communities. So whether we talk about uh, thermodynamics, quantum physics, isomorphism of verbal and genetic codes, or environmental uh, thought, Gaia consciousness. There is this uh, stream of thought that unites the entire chain of creation in one wave of life. And the human being has to know that it is only part of the wave it is not the creator of the way. And uh, once it, it knows that, it, its strategies will be clear. Uh, so, when we are talking about uh, Srila Prabhupada or uh, Chaitanya or Jagannatha Chaitana, uh, we are talking about uh, is normally discussed as Achinta Veda Veda or uh, we did also talk about Rasa Panchadhais. But it goes back uh, to the Vedic philosophy of that intense exaltation. Ko Anyat, Ka Pranyat, Jaddesha, Akasha, Anandana Shair. And this anand, as Tegor explains, is a surplus of creative joy. It is the joy in the unnecessary, where beauty and utility Necessity and accomplishment, form and function converge as they do in the knowledge system practices of our communities. Um, so, when um, Einstein spoke about all beings being connected in a dynamic wave of energy, matter being energy in motion, or Arthur Milton Young, designer of the first helicopter, announced that God sleeps in the minerals, awakens in the plants, walks in animals, and thinks in man. When uh, J.C. Bose experiments revealed analogous electrical responses in metals, plants, and muscles, living and non-living, when Srinivasa Ravanujam, who knew infinity, who made explorations in number theory, infinite series, and continuous fractions, he spoke about his vision of mathematical scrolls unfolding before his eyes as inspired by his family goddess, Mahalakshmi of Namakkal. So, these are people who saw the universe as the laboratory. And like Galileo, they read the language of mathematics and the characters of geometrical figures 
in the cosmos and uh, writ large on the face of all that they saw. All the dramatis personae in this uh, vast ever widening circle of hurtling galaxies, uh, they saw themselves as an integral part of this uh, universe. So for them, the simmering connection between the nominal and the phenomenal, the visible and the invisible, the material and the incorporeal, was not a matter of philosophy or words. They lived uh, it, breathed it, and uh, felt it um, with all their emotions, all their being. So um, when um, we are talking about uh, consciousness and the museum philosophy, one should remember that we also had mentioned about the eco-village, eco-tourism. That eco-tourism itself was a word invented by a French museum person. And uh, in the Western uh, practice, the eco or the eco-village is a way of creating a cordon sanitaire around a precinct and seeing it as an ecosystem. They do it for entertainment and for use, but the ecosystem, the bio, geo, chemical, cycling and recycling that keeps the world in a homeostatic balance is not to be contained in a precinct. It is a continuum and uh, in spite of the practical difficulties that face us today, a movement uh, like uh, the Gauriya Vishnu movement, Vishnu movement is uh, able uh, to uh, use this uh, consciousness uh, to reverse the cognitive colonialism that has invaded uh, the world. And um, even people like Heidegger, who was a Jam, I mean, uh, philosopher from the West. He spoke of humanity as tenants of a time of need which uh, lay under a double lack and a double knot, the no more of the gods that have fled, and not yet of the God that was coming. He added, if Europe was to fulfill or heal itself, it has to open itself up to other great beginnings, like the Indian, he mentioned it specifically, which uh, provide mighty and uncanny beginnings that are yet to be relieved, rethought, and retold in new contexts for healing and survival. So, if the Earth planet is to survive as a fragile spaceship, it has to, uh, human beings being uh, the leaders, who think that they own the Earth. It is their responsibility to act. Extinction was mentioned as an archaeologist because I also practice archaeology and art history. There have been successive phases like Miocene, Pleistocene, 
this is the Anthropocene phase. All previous uh, extinctions, the five extinctions, have been achieved by nature. This is the first time, the sixth extinction, will be achieved by humanity by a suicidal act. And this collective suicide is led by a few predatory individuals and sections of humanity. If the community doesn't wake up, it will be too late. And uh, uh, this destruction which is at the door will certainly overcome humanity. And this uh, destruction will not require a comet shower, a nuclear winter, or a geological cataclysm. It will be slow, it will be inevitable, and uh, instead of creating a museum of fossils, the human being will find itself, humanity will find itself in the fossil museum. If there is a species which uh, follows after it. One recalls that Swami Vivekananda, in a letter to Sister Nivedita, wrote, we are like cattle driven to the slaughterhouse under the whip, hastily nibbling a bit of grass on the wayside. So when one talks about Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnatpudam, Purnamidachate, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnamivasya Shishyate, or one recalls Nagarjuna, who uh, wrote Shunnamiti Navaktabham, Ashunnamiti Babhavet, Ubhayam Nubhayam Cheti, Bhaktartham Tukathate. There was this shared philosophy of seeing the zero and the plenum as one. And uh, uh, those are not just words. They had this sense of a, which human being will possibly not achieve, a galactic society of civilizational communities, which uh, should be a dream, even if it is a pipe dream, it should be uh, kept as part of uh, the human consciousness. So, when one talks about the uncertainty principle, one remembers Ishopanishad, tad dejati, tad naijati, tad dure, tad antike, tad antarasya, sarvasya, Tadu Sarvasasa Vayata. That is far, that is near. And uh, in talking about this intuitive principle, the Kenopanishad, Naham uh, Mani Suba, I mean, might mispronounce it, Subadeti. Nota Vedeti Veda, Yotastad Veda, Tad Veda, Nuna Vedeti Veda. Talking again about that intuitive consciousness. Anoraniyan, Mahato Mahiyan, Atmasujantor, Nihita Guhayam, Tamakratu, Pashati, uh, Pashati. Uh, Bito Shoka, Dhatu Prasadan Mahimano Atmani. Akratu is freedom from desire. It is also freedom from the intellectual elements. Unless uh, if the intellectual elements supervene in the road to fulfillment in consciousness, 
नायम आत्मा बल न मे दया न बहु न श्रुते न सो हाई वर मच लर्निंग वी मे एम एस इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू रीच आउट टू दैट ट्रूथ सो वन सॉन इज ट्राइंग टू यूनिवर्सलाइज we have this sophia perennis the universal human dialect of a human being being part of the web and uh, to speak after libnitz monadology in a philosophy we live in a philosophy in which each portion of matter is conceivable as a garden full of plants as a pond full of fishes but each branch of the plants each member of the animal each drop of the humor is also such a garden and such a plant uh, so um when one recalls uh, swami bebekanto to quote him again words man is an infinite circle whose circumference is nowhere but center is in one place god is an infinite circle whose circumference is uh, nowhere center everywhere man becomes god if he multiplies infinitely his center of consciousness so it is this uh, multiplication of consciousness which differentiate a chaitanya shila prabhu pada from other human beings so immediately move over their encompassing sweeping wings and uh, think of what can be done now the question is all this talk is all right but how what is to be shown it may well be asked uh, since uh, i have uh, is there time should i go on or conclude quickly okay so uh if on um if on looks at the i have looked at the sciences somewhat if on looks at the arts and the sanskaras all indian sanskaras desha kala kula jatta charas in all of them all human and divine families are invited to sit with you participate in the ceremonies and uh, their guests uh be it uh um pungsabana be it upanayana i mean one can go into great detail but there is no point garbhadhana everywhere it is the same story in the same way when one approaches a temple since i am also an art historian abhigamana pradakshina bhuta siddhi vyapaka nasa one touches the temple with, one, with one's mental fingers and the temple becomes the mantra murti which is assimilated to the bhakta see si bhakta becomes abhivakta by moving from salokya to sajujya so that is the significance of the temple in the same way if one is uh, um looking at uh, a yogi whether um in vaishnavism i mean shri chaitanya has his prasada or prema tanu in uh, tantra it is pranava tanu so the names are different the idea is the same that uh, this is a body exalted 
a body illumined, body animated by divine consciousness. Um, it's the rasa deha, rasa vaisa, uh, rasko, that, uh, having realized that rasa, one becomes labdhanandi, and one uh, is linked with the joy of creation and procreation all over the world. So in Buddhism, Buddha says, Jaklesha Sabodhi, just Sangsara Tan Nirvanam. So the Bhava Chakra and the Kala Chakra becomes the same. And when Buddha is uh, he's not evolving, he is involving. It, we, we have a theory of involution, not evolution. And uh, it is jatantara parinama prakritta purat, by the infilling of nature. And uh, so, Buddha is Mara transformed. And uh, it, that is his mission. In the same way, he for, uh, uh, looks at uh, the dance, or the music, or the architecture. The architecture goes up in an ascent of consciousness. It has a talat chanda and uddhat chanda, which has an entire philosophy behind it. It moves through vibrations of the anga shikharas, which is the vibrating body of uh, prana. It looks out abalakanas, and uh, there is an ascent of consciousness from the uh, ground of contingent being to the summit. Similarly, when uh, a sculpture is seen, or a dancer who is dancing in that as a sculpted image, they station themselves in a circle and they explore the circumscribed space from the minimum to the maximum deviation describing a triangle, a square, a spiral, and creating forms like Kathak and uh, other mutations of Indian dance forms. So in the music also, Bala Saraswati, the famous dancer, would say that we move from uh, the Alaripu, the outer tower, to Tillana, and where ultimately the final burst of sound takes place. The drums die down, and you are alone with God. So, um, we are talking about uh, uh, embodying the consciousness, of which there could be many uh, ways to do it, both in open air and in the closed door space, for which uh, a lot of uh, uh, ground discussions and initiatives are required, in which uh, one will have to implement uh, the consciousness ideas into visual, tactile uh, shapes, into traveling digital exhibitions, we have the Museo Bas experiment of the National Council of Science Museums. So there could be a Museo Bas which moves all over, apart from because the community is not always uh, glued uh, to the uh, computer or to uh, the digital displays. So um, I recall that in Pudukottai, I had a meeting with the nine Mats and the Samijis uh, to promote the movement, and they were um, already connected. Each temple was connected with about 70, 80 villages, and they're maintaining the temples. They didn't need the government. And an individual uh, family was maintaining an entire temple of about 10 acres of land. And uh, though they were villagers, they knew 
more about the temple members, its philosophy, and its uh, consciousness that animates uh, the texts that are dedicated to the deity than an art historian trained in the formal system knows. So I would conclude with uh, a quotation, a favorable, a favorite quotation of mine from John Donne that uh, every human being's death diminishes me. Even if a clod is washed away from Europe, we are less. If a koala dies in Australia, then our world is less. Um, therefore, do not call to find out for whom the bell tolls. The bell tolls for thee. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kalyan Kumar Chakravarti. I think what he has just made a presentation here can be summarized in one sentence, holistic, artistic, experiential framework for building a museum which is based on the fulcrum of consciousness study coming from the Vedic tradition. So uh, definitely, you know, you have been able to put down very clearly that the museum has to be a collection of ideas instead of objects. It has to revitalize or rejuvenate instead of just document. And it has to restore the synergistic connections that we have in the Vedic text. Um, very rightly mentioned by you, how the museums have to be very well connected with the communities if they have to keep living. Otherwise, they will become living dead. So thank you so much for this very important um, you know, guideline framework for the museum.